These murders have shaken our community and no arrest will ever bring back these young students. However, we do believe justice will be found through the criminal process. Who is Brian Koberger? We're taking a closer look at the accused murderer. From his early life in Pennsylvania and extensive criminal justice studies, all the way to the quadruple murder he's now accused of committing. Plus, what's next as he awaits his coming trial? It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022, in Lake County, State of Idaho, did unlawfully enter a residence located at 1122 King Road, Moscow, with the intent to commit the felony crime of murder. It's now been one year since the murders that sent shockwaves across the country when four University of Idaho students were found brutally stabbed to death. It took me a second. I, I really had to think about what I had just heard. Four murders in Moscow, Idaho is so out of character. For weeks, investigators kept details close to the vest, refusing to publicly name any suspects. And, and we see this coming. Eventually, we're going to narrow in on exactly what happened and uh, who did it. But nearly two months after the murders, an arrest was finally made. Detectives arrested 28-year-old Brian Christopher Kohlberger in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, on a warrant for murder of Ethan, Zena, Madison, and Kaylee. Authorities say this man, 28-year-old Brian Koberger, is responsible for the grisly murders of Zana Kernodal, Ethan Shapin, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonzalez. Investigators found all four students brutally stabbed to death in an off-campus home on King Road. At the time of the murders, Koberger lived just about 15 minutes from the college town of Moscow, Idaho, in Pullman, Washington. That's where he was a PhD candidate studying criminal justice. But before all this, Koberger spent most of his life in Pennsylvania. It's not always the creepy guy with glasses and oily hair and creeping around the corner. It's sometimes just that average Joe that on the inside you have no idea what he looks like. But on the outside he may just be seem like a normal person, much like Brian Koberger did. Brian Christopher Koberger was born on November 21st, 1994 in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, about an hour and a half north of Philadelphia. He graduated from Pleasant Valley High School in 2013, located about 10 minutes from his family home inside the Indian Mountain Lake development. That's where investigators would later compare DNA found at the Idaho crime scene with DNA collected from the Koberger family trash cans. Before all that, Koberger spent the majority of his 20s in the Lehigh Valley, about 45 minutes south of his family home. That's where he studied first at Northampton Community College and later DeSales University. It's a small school. It's not like it's a Penn State or a Pitt or a Temple. It's a very small school in a cornfield. So if, if you go there, you, you know most of the people within your, um, within your study and pretty much everyone that goes to the school, and he was not known. After his arrest, Law and Crime Network crews traveled to Pennsylvania to learn more about Koberger's past. That's where we met Josh Ferraro, who studied criminal justice alongside Koberger. At that time, I would have never said, oh yeah, that guy would, would do something like this. He may have been a little odd or a little off, but like other than that, you'd never expect someone to, to be allegedly part of a quadruple homicide, ever. Ferraro told us he approached Koberger for a project because Koberger mainly kept to himself. He was new and I said, hey buddy, do you wanna be my lab partner? And that's pretty much what was left, so I took him. And it ended up working out very well. At DeSales, the pair studied under renowned forensic psychology professor, Dr. Katherine Ramsland, who, since Koberger's arrest, has appeared on Long Crime Network. At Ramsland's direction, Koberger took classes that inspected the psyche of killers. The course that I took that stands out is psychological sleuthing, where you basically enter the mind of a killer. She would give you sheets and basically the sheets would denote and detail um, a crime. However, you wouldn't know who did what per se or where this was, but you'd have to, it was a group thing, so you'd get partnered up or in groups, and you would go through these um, activities and basically come up with a, a theory or a thesis and then challenge it to uh, Dr. Ramslin. The Master of Arts in Criminal Justice is awarded to Carlina Kemery.
Jenna Cook. Brian Koberger. After his graduation from DeSales University, Koberger headed more than 2,000 miles west to continue his criminal justice studies, this time at Washington State University. The dad was like wanting to introduce me to Brian. And he, he said something, I, I don't remember the exact like, like word he used to describe him, but it was something that was like, he, he has a hard time making friends or he's kind of shy or something like, 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 uh, like that. After arriving in Washington, Koberger moved into the same apartment building as Christian Martinez. He described Koberger the same way as Ferraro, standoffish but seemingly harmless. But Martinez's wife felt differently. Like every time I would like talk to him, my wife describes it as like a death stare. <laughs> and like, it kind of is like, like, you know, you make eye contact with people, but like, you're not like constantly like just staring at them. That's, he would be like constantly like staring at me. Like he's just trying to like uh, analyze me. But that, that was a feeling I would get. After the murders on November 13th of last year, Martinez says Koberger reached out to him about the topic. He was like, oh, did you hear about these murders that happened? And it was like, so short after they actually happened like there was barely any news articles out so there wasn't much that i could have like read so i was like yeah man that's crazy yeah of course i've heard about him <laughs> he was like yeah it seems like they don't have any leads and i'm like yeah i mean there's not much about it you know there's nothing i have no details really to say <laughs> but yeah and then he's like yeah it seems like they think it was a crime of passion those were the two things he said was that they had no leads and they think it was a crime of passion. Martinez says Koberger may have had a fascination with death or dying. One thing that stuck out was, uh, uh, it was kind of like on the subject of what it would take to like, take someone's life. Like it was kind of like he was trying to see my, like my perspective on, well, I guess taking someone's life. Martinez kept in contact with Koberger in the weeks after the murders as the investigation continued. The loss of Zana, Kaylee, Madison, and Ethan remains the highest priority for the Moscow Police Department. We will continue putting all of our resources into investigating and solving these murders. Investigators are prepared to work through the Thanksgiving holiday to continue their efforts. As local, state, and federal police continued on in the investigation, Koberger sent Martinez a text on Thanksgiving reading, quote, Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. This message was sent just 11 days after the murders. Weeks later, Koberger was headed back to Pennsylvania for the December holiday break. As he and his father drove cross country, they got pulled over. At the time, Koberger was driving his white Hyundai Elantra that investigators had previously announced was a vehicle of interest in the case. So you're coming from Washington State University? Yeah. And you're going where? Uh oh. Oh, okay. Soon, the Idaho murder investigation went national when Pennsylvania authorities were called to help. Uh, we weren't um, advised of the presence uh, of the defendant in our county until um, only a couple days uh, before the apprehension of the defendant. Uh, but when we were told, uh, we came together and worked very closely um, with uh, Captain uh, Kramer, who did an excellent job in. Uh, almost like a clockwork operation. Uh, part of uh, my duties um, were to ensure that three separate search warrants uh, were issued. Koberger was arrested at his family's home in Albrightsville, where investigators later recovered multiple items from his white Hyundai Elantra, including goggles, hiking boots, a shovel, and a wrench. At the start of the year, Koberger appeared in Monroe County, Pennsylvania court, Cameras were not allowed inside the hearing, but he quickly waived his right to extradition. Um, it is a, a quirk, apparently. It's uh, not in the norm uh, of the states I'm familiar with that Idaho does not release their probable cause affidavit in support of their arrest warrant until after uh, their defendant is uh, brought or uh, returned to that state. Um, but having uh, read those documents and the uh, sealed affidavits of probable cause, I definitely believe that one of the main reasons the defendant chose to waive extradition and hurry his return back to Idaho was the need to know what was in those documents. The court documents were later unsealed, showing surviving roommate Dylan Mortensen saw the suspect the night of the murders. She describes the suspect as, quote, 5'10 or taller, male, not very muscular, but athletically built with bushy eyebrows 
Prosecutors say that description matches Koberger to a T. Count two alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Ryan C. Koberger, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latok County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Madison Mogan, a human being, by stabbing Madison Mogan from which she died. Since his extradition, Koberger has been held at the Latah County Jail, where sources say he follows his case closely. I think it's very normal for someone to follow their case if it's highly publicized. They want to see what everyone's talking about, what they're saying about their personal life as well as about the case. It's it's like checking Instagram or your Facebook to see what people are, are tagging you in or, or saying about you. Long Crime Network host and public defender Brian Buckmeyer says Koberger's interest with the case shouldn't be seen as an admission of guilt. I'm not surprised that many people are having this negative connotation to Brian Koberger following his own case because for many it's guilty until proven innocent. And so in that lens, him following the case seems somewhat nefarious. But think of it this way, if you knew that the entire world was talking about you, wouldn't you want to know what they're saying? Besides Koberger's fascination with the Idaho Four, Sources from the Latah County Jail also say the accused killer has found religion from behind bars. They say he, quote, sits down with a pastor and receives his own private mass. It is unsurprising for someone to find religion while in prison or in jail. Just like I would say it's unsurprising for someone to find religion when they're diagnosed with cancer or with a severe disease. It's, I think, the person seeing their own mortality and the difficulty of their situation and looking for an answer. Reports also say Koberger has been a model inmate since his arrest, who maintains a strict vegan diet while behind bars. For now, Koberger is being held at the Latah County Jail only about a mile away from the crime scene. His case was scheduled to go to trial this October, but it's been postponed indefinitely. When the case does finally go to trial, Koberger can expect a weeks-long case ahead of him. Looking ahead to the verdict, if Koberger is convicted of the murders, he could be sentenced to death. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.